Fasting, intermittent or otherwise, as well as other forms of caloric restriction, are becoming really popular dietary means in the mainstream, not only for reductions in adiposity, weight loss, quote unquote, but also ostensibly for a variety of health and longevity promoting outcomes. One of the primary mechanisms through which these benefits are supposedly derived is through that of autophagy. Now we're gonna talk about autophagy and how there might be some other more efficacious means of deriving the benefits of autophagy without having to do an excessive amount of fasting. Unless of course that's your thing. <laughs> so what is autophagy? Autophagy is like natural recycling inside our body. There's a lot of pieces of old, stressed out, used up cells that we can recycle into systems to be reused for other processes. So we see this process take place when we're repairing from damage, a cut or a bruise or micro tears in muscle. In fact, muscle is probably the simplest way to explain this process is if you look at this picture of an actual muscle, it kind of looks like a rope, right? And the muscle damage is represented by what you can see are frays in the rope. And the little purple things are the nuclei kind of moving around to affect repairs. They're like the superintendents basically directing the repair process. And what ends up happening is you have these little guys called lysosomes that come in and they basically kind of chew on the frayed ends to clean them off so that new proteins can come in and attach and repair the muscle. Well, what happens to all that old kind of broken frayed ends that the lysosomes chewed up? Well, some of that, of course, gets eliminated as waste, but some of those get refed into the free amino acid pool in your bloodstream. And since amino acids are essentially like letters in an alphabet, they can be used to then reconstruct other things in combination with additional proteins that you make and get from your food. So that's a simple day-to-day -day example of autophagy without having to delve into a crazy amount of biochemistry. So that's all fine and good, but why would we want to induce autophagy? What are some benefits of getting more of this process? Well, depending on who you ask, it's everything plus the kitchen sink, right? And I'm a big fan. This is not a skeptical or anti-autophagy video. I'm all for it. However, like a lot of things, there's a bell curve. You pull that lever too hard and there are some negative side effects, especially if you derive the lion's share of your autophagy from fasting or pure caloric restriction. So in this video, I want to explain some other possible means of promoting greater autophagy. Spoilers, it's exercise. Now we've already seen in the earlier example of a damaged piece of muscle tissue that autophagy is involved in the repair process, in the recovery process from exercise. But we've found as early as 1984 that autophagy is actually involved in the process of exercising via a variety, come to find out, of signaling pathways. And specific to AMPK, I've read some reports which claim that an hour of zone two conditioning promotes as much autophagy as 24 to 36 hours worth of fasting in humans. Is that hard science or is that an apocryphal tale? Who's to know? However, what I do know is that I can certainly do an hour of zone two with minimal downsides versus there are tremendous downsides to 36 hours of not eating. If training improves my energy, improves my metabolism, allows me to eat a little bit more, and I can combine that with some form of more psychologically manageable caloric restriction, that seems to be a superior option than just not exercising and then also not eating. Now, of course, you can train and also fast, which I ostensibly do every morning. However, I don't necessarily consider that a fast because I'm still training off of stored glycogen in my liver and muscle because I generally have my largest meal of the day as my last meal of the day. So while I have no freshly digested food in me, I'm certainly not technically in a fasted state. But this is one of the reasons, folks, why I prefer to not snack and have 
extended periods of time in between my meals when I don't eat. If you want to index more towards the fasting side of things and less towards the exercise side of things, this is a much more manageable strategy psychologically. While extended fasting can be a great tool to just kind of train yourself to not know but actually feel that you can go a meaningful period of time without eating and that's very powerful, it gives you a lot of agency. It's not necessarily a thing that is the most efficacious practice for any of the purported outcomes, health, longevity, weight loss, anything like that, more so than just periods of caloric restriction and then adding a little bit of exercise on top of that. That way you can have your cake and eat it too. Quite literally, pun intended. Because you have to look at it this way, folks. You have these two levers, which of course you can pull at the same time, which is caloric restriction and exercise. There are other levers as well, but those are your kind of two big ones that are available for everybody. Exercise seems to, per unit volume of effort, have a much bigger impact on inducing autophagy than fasting does, which is why you have to do it for a meaningful period of time in order to get an effect. The duration has to be a lot longer. If we take either activity to its inevitable conclusion, pulling the exercise lever too hard, you just get fatigued and you have to stop. You pull the caloric restriction lever too hard and you eventually die of starvation. Which leads me to my next point, which is excessive autophagy can lead to a process called autosis. And that's autosis, not apoptosis, both of which result in cell death. But autosis is definitively non-apoptotic, non-necrotic, autophagic dependent cell death. It's not great. And matter of fact, to that point, I've heard Alan Aragorn say, chasing autophagy is like chasing high cortisol. It's one of those things that's gonna kinda happen on its own. You don't really need to crank that lever too much harder. So the actionable takeaway from this video, folks, is that caloric restriction is probably a good thing for most people, and certainly exercise is a good thing for most people as well. When it comes to biology, however, you can definitely do too much of a good thing. So if fasting's your thing and you've lost weight and you feel great and you think autophagy has some additional benefits for you, I'm not here to say that it doesn't. I'm just here to submit to you that perhaps a combination of caloric restriction, maybe some time restricted form, in addition to exercise, might be a more efficacious combination of tools to achieve the desired outcome. Thanks for watching.